Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. Together we will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we calculate whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we analyze and look at the financial ratios. The company we're going to look at is LTC Properties and this is a healthcare REIT. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 1.5 billion dollars. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. Let's see what they're trading at. 38.52 a share. So that's one share of stock. Next we're going to pull the free cash flows. And the way you value a company or an asset is you estimate the future free cash flows and discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And I'll throw that into the model. Let's pull the net income. That's a profit and loss on the income statement. And that also is part of the calculation for the stock price. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year. That goes into the model. And the numbers look pretty good. They're fairly consistent from year to year. They have really good profit margins, 50, 90%. I don't know how you get a profit margin 90%, but that's really amazing. I always like to look at free cash flow relative to net income. It should be higher. Free cash flow should be higher because the way you calculate free cash flow is you start with net income and then add back the non-cash items on the income statement. And in 2018, they have less free cash flow than net income. And in Yahoo Finance, you can't really identify why because Yahoo doesn't list every detail. But I pulled their uh, statement of cash flows off the 10K. And the reason this is is because in 2018, they had a $70 million loss on the sale of real estate. And that brought down their free cash flow that year. But it didn't affect net income. Let's look at a capital structure of the company to figure out the discount rate we need to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $31 million of interest on their debt. I found that on the 10K. It's not in Yahoo Finance. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liabilities section. Current debt, no current debt. Long-term debt is $693 million. That's debt due after 12 months. They pay 4.4% interest on the debt. REITs don't usually pay taxes, so that's the cost of debt, 4.4%. The cost of equity, we need the beta to figure that out. And the beta is 0.81, so they have a low beta. It moves less than the market, which is good. And now we need to go back to their balance sheet to get their current assets, because later on we're going to calculate the current ratio. And current assets are mainly the assets that you use to run your day-to-day -day business. And let's see how much that is. That's $355 million. And obviously Yahoo doesn't give all the detail, but they do give 4.2 million of cash and 45 million in net receivables. Let's see what their current liabilities are. 35 million. And that's all accrued liabilities. Accrued liabilities is when you incur an expense, but you don't actually pay the expense, you pay it at a later time. Payroll and payroll taxes are a common type of accrued liability. Let's see how much equity they have. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's $777 million. That's total assets minus total liabilities. That consists of $398,000 of common stock and $90 million of negative retained earnings. Retained earnings is how much of the company's earnings has not been paid out as dividends. So lots of REITs have negative retained earnings because they pay a lot out in dividends. Let's go back to the income statement and see their operating income. That's $80 million. We need this number to calculate the interest coverage ratio later. And let's look at a capital structure. 47% debt, and they pay 4.4% for that debt. 53% equity, and they pay 8.5% for that equity. So the WAC is 6.5%, and that's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. And we get a value of the company of $2.8 billion. 
we divide that by 39 million shares and we get an intrinsic stock price of $71. They're trading at $39, so they're trading at a 46% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're really close to me. They're at $72 a share. Let's see what the stock has been trading. It looks like it's been trading in the low 50s at some point, but it's dropped quite a bit. And I think with coronavirus, people are a little concerned with healthcare REITs, but I think in a couple of years, it should be fine. Let's look at the financial ratios to get more information. They don't have a good PE or a good price of sales. They do have a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. And I like to see below 15, they're at 18.6. So that means investors are willing to pay about $18 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 8.1. So that means investors are willing to pay $8 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.9. So that means investors are willing to pay about $2 for $1 book value. They have a really high current ratio, pretty low ROE, and uh, 2.6 interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities 10 times. That's a lot more than they need. ROE is net income over equity. That's 10%. I like to see above 20%. They don't provide the best value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest expense about two and a half times. I like to see at least 2.0. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on National Health Investors, Omega, and here's LTC. And if LTC has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. And a common ratio to look at REITs is price over funds from operations per share and the lower the better. And Omega has the best in this category, LTC is the worst, but they're all pretty close. So that means investors are willing to pay $12.40 for $1 of funds from operations. And in terms of PE, they're better than the average, a little better. They are a little worse than the average in price to sales and price to book. They do have a really high current ratio, probably too high. ROE, they're about average. And all three companies are fairly close in debt. And LTC is the smallest of the bunch. Let me know if you invest in REITs. Let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.